A ripple tank is the perfect way to demonstrate optical and wave phenomena in the classroom and it's made super quick and super easy using a mini ripple tank. In this video I'm going to walk you through all the accessories that come with the ripple tank so that you can get the most out of your purchase and allow you to bring this bit of kit out at every available opportunity. There's so much cool stuff that you can do with this apparatus including principles of tricking radar, how noise cancelling headphones work and how your Wi-Fi signal finds its way around your house without having direct line of sight. So first let me show you the different types of waves we can create using the dipper set. So we can have plane waves, one circular wave and two circular waves. Let's have a look at these in more detail. Plane waves, they're nice and straight and we can see that the wave front stays straight as it propagates. Now plane waves are used for most of the demonstrations in the ripple tank so we'll be using this guy a lot. Now it might be interesting to note here that perfect plane wave fronts just aren't a thing in nature. Of course we can engineer them but waves that occur in nature are emitted as point sources and have circular wave fronts or spherical if we move into 3D. They are isotropic emitters and emit energy equally in all directions. However at large distances from the source these circular wave fronts flatten out and this can be seen here using the point source dipper. So here near the source we have high curvature on the wave front but at longer distances you can see that this curvature is less and as we move further and further away from the source this effect will be emphasized. This is called the far field approximation and means that we can approximate that we receive plane waves when we are far away from a point source. So what happens when we have two point sources operating in the same field? Well we can have a look at this using the two point source dipper and we instantly see that we now get an interference field. So what's happening here? Well we've got two coherent sources of waves which means that the waves that come from the dippers will be exactly the same frequency and exactly in phase. So that means that every part of the waveform is matched as it propagates. Now in this field when the waves overlap and cross over each other we'll get areas where a peak meets a peak accounting for the dark bands and we get constructive interference and similarly troughs meet troughs in the light bands and we get destructive interference and we get areas of cancellation where a peak meets a trough and eliminates the signal. Now this is how noise cancelling headphones work. They listen to external noise and then create an opposing sound wave exactly 180 degrees out of phase with the incoming. So this means that peaks meet troughs and the noise is eliminated. TV and radio broadcasters also use this principle in order to be able to strengthen the signal of the information that they're sending out. So by using a network of transmitters or transmitters in different locations, they can strengthen weak signals and extend the coverage over a larger area. Okay, so let's go back to plane waves and see what phenomena we can conjure. Okay, so for diffraction we need two metal L plates and we are going to position these in the tank to fence in the plane waves and force them through a small aperture. So here you can see the nice circular wave fronts emerging from the aperture. This phenomenon is called diffraction and it explains why we can hear someone speaking from the next room despite not having line of sight to them. Now this principle is also really important for telescopes which let light in through their aperture at the front and that light diffracts on entry. Now the amount of diffraction that happens at that point is responsible for the resolution of the telescope or how well the telescope can distinguish between two closely spaced objects like stars and this limit is called the diffraction limit. We can look at reflection from both straight and curved surfaces. Again for these demos we are going to need the plane wave dipper so let's look at the curved surface first. So this is a parabolic reflector and it mimics a satellite dish so something like a sky dish that we see on our houses or something like the Lovell telescope at Jodrell Bank. Now the job of this dish is to collect a signal from a large area and focus that information down to a point. You can see that it's doing that just here. Now this is the focal point of the dish where the signal converges and in order to collect that signal we place a receiver exactly here. This is why you see the receiver arms on these types of dishes. We can turn the reflector the other way around and get an idea of how convex mirrors work like wing mirrors on a car or security mirrors in shops and because the waves spread out on reflection our eyes interpret them as coming from a larger area, allowing us to visualise a larger field of view. Now for reflection from a flat or straight edge, we can use one of the L shapes. And if we put it in the tank at an angle, we should be able to see that oh, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, proving the law of reflection. 
Now it's important here to distinguish between the wavefront and the direction of propagation. Here we're just looking at the wavefronts, but in both cases, the angle of propagation will be 90 degrees out on both sides. So the math still works, but just make sure you're not introducing any misconceptions here with the direction of propagation and the orientation of the wavefront. These two lenses also come with a ripple tank. So you get one convex and one concave. Now the effects we see from these shapes depend on refraction. And you will know if you've watched our previous video that the depth of the water on top of the shape needs to be really shallow. Now, like I said, if you've already seen our video on refraction in a ripple tank, you will be an expert at this already and you will be armed with a syringe. And we can use this to top up and take out small volumes of water so that we can see the effects nice and clearly. So with the convex lens shape, let's get the water level just right for this one. So we know that the water wave will be slowed down as it travels across the top of the shape and this mimics refraction. The water wave will be most slowed down for larger path lengths above the shape and less slowed down for the smaller path lengths. This means that the wave will bend as a result and we get this curve in the wavefront. And for the concave shape, we see the exact same bending of the waveform, but just in the reverse. So the wave will be traveling slowest here where the path length over the shape is the longest and the wave travels fastest here over short path lengths. So this means we get divergent waves coming out from the lens shape. These principles feed into some of the techniques that can be used to confuse radar systems. So we might be able to redirect a signal away from a receiver or make it think like it's coming from a different location. By linking these demonstrations to stealth and cloaking techniques, this practical becomes a lot more exciting. Lastly, we can use the wedge shape for general refraction. And this is spoken through in greater detail in the video in the link. So this video covers what you can do with the accessories in the mini ripple tank. If you have any other ideas, please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.